Good evening folks. I thought I would take some time to show you the latest horn that I've been working on. It is, um, and if you guys have been following me on Facebook, you'll you'll have already seen uh, the still shots of this particular horn, but this is the completed horn. Um, it's a fairly large horn, almost 14 and a half inches in uh, length in it, from length from the end cap here all the way over to the spout. Um, the the horn itself is one of the first times I've ever done uh, the famous and iconic um, Ben Franklin serpent. The This particular image was, um, was a political cartoon that first appeared in the Pennsylvania Gazette on May 9th, 1754. And actually was really um, discussing the uh, representation of the, the American colonies. Uh, as produced by the British um, colonists in North America. Um, and it was an eight-segmented sep um, serpent. So there's one s right here, 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 and here. Um, so there's eight total uh, particular uh, segments. Uh, the, the tail is represented by South Carolina. There's North Carolina here, Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, and New England. New England representing Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and so forth. Um, out of its mouth is a banner that says Liberty. Now, Liberty did not appear in the 1754 uh, publication of this political cartoon, but this is actually meant to be a, a Revolutionary War uh, style powder horn so liberty seems to be appropriate and of course at the very bottom you'll see join or die right there and it's bordered much in the same way as the original cartoon was with a simple filled in border here all right the end of the the horn has a simple scroll work and let's see if you can see that a little bit better yeah. and um, and the end cap which is uh, uh, a Maryland black walnut is affixed by pine pegs right here all the way around the horn. It has a very simple wooden st uh, an iron staple here and on the other side we see the word Liberty right? and Liberty's uh, done in a, a German fracture font um, very very common during uh, throughout our early history in this country um, and then it's bordered by some f simple floral design almost like a renaissance floral design so it's a fairly simple horn it's got some very simple statements to it um, and likewise the the floral bordering comes up in the ear um, the neck is a step down neck with a rather large wedding band um, strap retainer here and right to a simple spout plug, uh, spout here, and then of course the acorn style spout plug, which this one's particularly made out of, I believe, poplar, no pine, um, and it's stained. So and that's it, pretty much it. Um, you'll notice I, I'm filming this on my office desk, uh, and actually this is where I do a lot of my scrimshaw work. The, the actual construction work of the horn, the assembly of it, the end cap, the iron staple, um, a lot of the file work that's required, the cut work that's required here, that's all done in my shop. And one of these days I'll, I'll videotape the shop. Um, but it's, it's a relatively simple horn. Um, I would suspect this thing holds uh, probably a little bit over a half pound of powder. Um, you know, more than likely... 3F powder, about a half pound, maybe a little bit more. It could be almost as much as three quarters of a pound because this, like I said, is a hollowed out cap. So um, the the depth of this this end cap goes pretty much up to this ring right here. And this style of, of end cap is called a beehive end cap. Um, so it's, it looks very reminiscent of a early beehives kind of thing you would see almost in a. Uh, um, a Warner Brothers cartoon from the 30s or 40s. So, if you enjoyed this, go ahead and make comments in the comment section. And that's it for now. I should have another horn coming very soon. 
So I hope you enjoy.